Hello everyone, welcome back. It's time for another Kaguya Summer reaction. This time we are up to season 2, episode 10. And I had to re record this part because I got the episode number wrong the first time. And that means we are very close to the end, and that is very sad. On the other hand, there's going to be some real cool stuff coming up, so, you know, I'm going to look forward to what we've got and not lament the fact that it's almost over. Again, this show hasn't missed. It's just been absolutely fantastic. Humor is great. It's managing to do a really good job with maintaining this sort of continuous story now. Um, so last episode we had... So we found that Miko has a very active imagination. Um, before joining the student council, we saw that she, in a very sort of dramatic presentation, how she had imagined herself as kind of a... How, imagining that she would suffer these incredible hardships on her way to going in and improving the student council through her presence and all that sort of glorious stuff. Um, and it turned out to be very different from how she imagined it. And then when asked to try to go over her issues, she managed to resolve all of the past concerns that she had. And instead, she replaced it with another narrative of Kaguya being the manipulative villain inside the council. Which, I mean, she does try to be a bit manipulative, but this was an entirely different way. Kaguya is way more innocent than um, the picture that Miko had started to paint of her. And that resolved in a very amusing fashion as Miko confronted Kaguya and Kaguya being so flustered by being confronted with questions about the president just totally disarmed Miko with her completely innocent reaction. That was great, that was funny. But Miko's use this se this season has just been absolutely fantastic. Just getting to see her side of things in that first section was great. Um, and then she was also used again later just to enhance the third section where she walked in on Ishigami getting changed, and the evolution of her walking in on awkward things in the student council has just been mwah, perfect. So good. But after all of her previous reactions, this time she just walks in, eyes widen, closes the door silently and leaves. It was actually just perfect comedy. Not an expert on comedy or how it works. Someone can you know, who studies it can probably say why that was so effective, but man, that was that was hilarious. Yeah, so third one, we had Ishigami, who is going to be joining the cheer squad. We also had some really nice interactions with Shinomiya. That's pretty cool. I do like this continuing growth of all of the characters throughout the thing. It's not just a... It's not just a return to the status quo. It obviously can't move too much, but it's not like they're keeping all of their characters, you know. Sorry, you aren't allowed to evolve or change or, you know, develop a relationship or whatever. You know, you're always the guy that has the one-shot joke forever. You know, you aren't allowed to become something else, so I'm really enjoying it. And in between, we had Kaguya developing her routine um, to try to calm herself down, which is the hand on the cheek and that led to her confronting or being confronted by the president becoming flustered um <laughs> we had that great fighting game sort of sequence to frame the whole thing and uh yeah i mean mostly that's sort of been resolved but that was also very funny but i think the main thing now that we're looking forward to is the continuing arc of um, Ishigami and the sports festival, I think it is. That's why he's joined the um the cheer team was because of a sports festival coming up. That's a mini arc. I don't know whether that's going to carry us through to the end or just for a couple of episodes, but I'm looking forward to it. So I'm gonna get to it. Okay, so just remember that this is a full length timer based reaction. So you're going to need to get your own copy to watch along with me. 
I'll be doing a countdown and there'll be a timer just above my video, starting in three, two, one, now. Another cold open. Shirogane is having a nervous breakdown. They have an interesting relationship. Is it a rebellious teenager phase? Of course. I'm really enjoying the use of the supporting characters as well in this show. You know who we haven't seen for a while? There was that one girl that would always show up um, just looking distraught, usually hiding like behind a pillar or around a corner or something. I love this sequence, it's so good. Oh. Just recently, I watched, um... Oh, crap. I've forgotten who it was. Never mind, I'll think about it and talk about it later. <laughs> Three days earlier. Okay, Shirogane can't speak. Promise not to drink juice at dinner. Okay, Dad. The mother ran off. Oof. Okay, that's why she acts like that. Can't have that. Got to remain carefully distant. Grilling via verbal abuse. your sugar daddy <laughs> yes please never say that again
I guess it would be. Yeah. No one understands. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Not like I care or anything. Yeah, sounds tough for their dad. Finally. Wants to dance? What is this? There's someone writhing in agony to the beat of the drum. As usual, she's coaching him. I was hoping against hope when I saw the title that it was going to be another... Another Chica coaching him show, uh, skit. But I didn't dare hope. I don't think he's trying to become a pro. Not good enough. Oh no. I guess maybe we don't get to <laughs> She's at it. I guess we don't get to see her coaching. Ha <laughs> ha. 
<laughs> that was a great shot of her sitting there. Hey, you abandoned him. This is even better than I could have hoped. Is that a real thing? Or a real story? He's got it. I was racking up the wins today. Hmm. I suppose if those are the stories that are going around, I can see why there's why some people have issues with them.
Good on you working and trying, Ishigami. Oh, that was wholesome. Just a very quick sort of check in with Ishigami's story. Oh no. Uh oh. Oh my god. Okay. Oh no, his dad. I wonder if the uh, teams are just sort of randomly assigned. Hmm. All right, it's interesting seeing her with different hair again. remembers the call. Wow. He's so calm. I used to think there weren't any good people. I suppose given her family, you'd automatically just assume that everyone was like that. Uh, everyone was scheming.
Tá? Uh oh. <laughs> I've never met him in my life. And right now, I'm sure he hates him. Imagine having people cheering for Ishigami. I'm going to have to go back to that easy to understand diagram. Man, that was another good episode. I'm still thinking about it. I don't know whether I need more time to think before I talk. So we found that. I guess we got to see a little bit more into Shirogane's home and the sort of interaction he has with his family. Um, we're reminded again that he's not from a as well-to-do family as uh, or probably most of the, his peers at his school. Similar similarly, I hadn't thought about what had happened to his mother either. I'd commented in an earlier episode that I hadn't actually thought about whether, like, Shinomiya's mum was just not, you know, very present, or, you know, that she was around but didn't, you know, sort of command as much attention as, like, the father, but then found that apparently she's gone, uh, passed away, and in Shirogane's case, I hadn't thought about whether the mother existed or not either. But apparently she's left for like seven years already, uh, but is apparently still alive. But yeah, ran away with someone. So hmm. that's just sort of interesting to interesting to learn more about how about their family and just all of these sort of smaller things just fleshing out the fleshing out the characters. Then we had the the Soren dance, that's what it was called, I think, where it started off with, started off making you think it was going to be another Chica coaching him one, but then quickly changed it to a, another more interesting evolution on that formula. This time, sort of seeing um, the way that Kaguya and Chika have some competing philosophies on teaching, or at least the teaching of this dance, anyway. So again, that worked out, but also managed to get some a bit of a change in the formula this time. So those were great bits, but I think the real good parts of the episode were the very short section, uh, the, like the third one, which was actually just sort of a way to visit um, 
Ishigami's story again, the way he's been going, and mentioned his sort of backstory. He said he'd had a kind of a darker past, and apparently he'd, or the rumor is that he'd stalked a girl and assaulted her boyfriend, but he also hasn't given his own side of the story. I don't know whether it's just because he decided there didn't seem to be much of a point. If everyone else has already decided in their head, then it could be sort of the hopeless feeling of, well, everyone's made up their mind, there's no point. And when you're sort of, you know, like that, it's very disenfranchi disenfranchised, then you can, you know, you can be like that, well, what's the point? But he's also extremely socially awkward, so it could be that he did something that just got misinterpreted that way, or he could have just, or he could even have done it. But the Ishigami now seems a lot more, even if he's still kind of a bit socially awkward, he seems much more self-aware, I guess, and at least certain, certainly not the same. Ishigami, who may or may not have done that. I don't know. I want to... I expect we'll be learning more about this anyway. But whatever the case, as we've been seeing, he has been looking to try to change, or at least not necessarily change, like it might not be a thing with him, but he's... He's at least willing to try to engage with, you know, the normal world again. And doing things like this, you know, not just completely isolating himself, but in joining the cheer team and taking part sort of as a, you know, actively in the sports festival and having people recognize that he was actually doing it, you know, in earnest, not, um, not just for laughs or, you know, as a as a joke or something, but he was giving it his all, and uh, yeah, I think he was rewarded for it. I, uh, I was real happy to see people, you know, him getting cheered for, and him smiling at realizing he was getting che cheered for, and, you know, winning in that, what it, like, this really good race with, uh, with the cheer team leader, was it? There's so much. I gotta say, it is easier to just laugh at things, but when it comes down to when it starts throwing the more interesting stuff at me, well, not interesting. I, <laughs> of course, I like the the humor, but when I've got all of these other sort of character interaction and um, story and backstory things to think about. Don't know where to go with them. It's what I watch the show for, though. But it does mean that my brain is usually too busy chewing on them to be able to say anything at this point. Looking forward to more of that, anyway. And, of course, we also had uh, Miyuki's father, who, from the first part of the episode we saw the way he sort of interacts with his kids that he um I think he's still you know more or less a caring father still not good at holding down a job at least or a bit inconsistent but at least you know they're surviving and he does I guess take an interest in his kids at least, enough that he went to the sports festival just to have a bit of a sticky beat to try to, you know, it's pretty clear now that that's why he was there. I don't know why I didn't make the connection, but it's clear that it was connected from the first skit to the last, that after discovering that his son was having these sort of romantic, um, troubles that 
going to the sports festival seemed like a good excuse to go try to find this person. I mean, you know, he doesn't have a job, so I guess it's right. He probably didn't have anything better to do, but I don't think it's just he decided to show up on a whim. I'm pretty sure that he came because he wanted to try to find out more about what's sort of going on there. Hmm. Good episode. We've got three left. Two left. What the heck, dude? That's right, this was episode 10. I think I said 9 at the start. This is episode 10. We've only got two left. Very sad. Anyway, that's it for episode 10. Tell me what you thought of the episode in the comments. Do you know whether there's going to be a season 3? Have you heard anything? Otherwise, do you have any comments on what else I can watch after this is done? Um, otherwise, take care, and I'll see you next time.